Hey. There he is. What's up, man? Hey, man. hey Doug. What's up, Doug? What's up? How are you? Good, good. Haven't seen you in a while, huh? Yeah, it's been a long time, man. It's really long time. Really. Yeah. You know? So, Ice Age, Waves of Lost and Power. Tell me a little bit about the new album uh, and some of the tracks and uh, some of the tracks that you really enjoyed uh, recording. Uh, who wants Hal, to go? Why don't you, how did you go first, Hal? Wow, that's a good one. Uh, as far as the, the new album is concerned, it, it's been a long time coming, as you know. Uh, a, a very much a work in progress and uh, something that uh, almost feels like we were destined to do and complete. Right. Um, as far as the new tracks and, and uh, some of my personal favorites are uh, the lead track, Needle's Eye, for me. I, I mean, it just comes out swinging. Um, everything about that song. Um, Pretty much embodies a little metal, a little prog, uh, a little funk. It has everything just wrapped up into one, which I, you know, uh, it's just for me, I just love playing that stuff that way. So that's always enjoyable. Um, other great track for me was uh, River Flow. Um, I just thought that really reached out to old school prog. Right. Um, more like a, in the vein of maybe, maybe an old school Genesis or something or Kansas. Right. Um, and uh, something as far as this new album, I think we kept a writing style that was very melodic, um, as crazy and progressive as it might have uh, might get at certain times. It still has a hook, still has a chorus, still has something to grab onto and latch onto, which I always loved about this band. Um, and again, you know, we we went back to the first debut album of uh, the great divide and uh reached out to a couple of older songs and kind of intertwined them and segued into songs on this album part one part two part five part six so on and so right. forth in that whole prog vein right uh which was a lot of fun just to revisit those those uh riffs and revisit those those parts it was really interesting this time around uh, mm -hmm. i felt like the band's really really changed since those the last two decades as far as maturity, as far as experiences, as far as uh, playing techniques. So it was just, it was just a whole, the whole package to me was just very enjoyable. And, uh, and it just allowed everybody to be so creative this time around. It was just so much fun to do. Cool. Now with Gear Split, how did uh, they welcome you back after, you know, a, a hiatus type uh, lull? I mean, I think, uh, well, yeah, I mean, just, you know, for in the spirit of transparency, Ear Split uh, works directly with Sensory Records. Right. So, so you know, they, Sensory is our label and Ear Split is the, is the company that's uh, getting us out, you know, to the universe. Right. Um, and so if your question is kind of like more about the label, um, what I, is that? Am I right about that, yeah. Brian? Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a really lucky uh, twist of fate in that you know we we had been writing uh, for years and purely as a passion project amongst ourselves. Right. There was no agenda. There was no uh, particular trajectory of oh, we're going to do this and we're going to accomplish X Y Z. It was we. We're friends. Right. We love playing music together. We're writing. And in one of the periods of the darkest times of lockdown, early lockdown, <laughs> we took two songs that were pretty much done. Right. And uh, put them into a digital press kit and pitched them to a whole ton of labels. Right. And Sensory Records, this guy, Ken Golden, who's had a relationship with the band before I was even in the band at all. Right. And, yeah. and, and Josh, I'm sorry, Jimmy and Hal can speak to that. Uh, he responded, he remembered the band and he was fully on board, like with one track with right. not even a full track, but a portion of one of the Epic tracks on the new album, which is actually called perpetual child part two. Right. So, uh, Jim, Hal, if you want to talk about the band's connection to Ken from the old days. Yeah, I mean, uh, we met Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, 97, 98, Power Mad. Yeah, yeah, it was Power Mad. 
And, uh, you know, he approached us. We, we got to speak to him a while. He was a, he was a big fan of the band. Um, and uh, we got to know him a, a lot more as the years went by. And uh, I, Ken was actually responsible for landing us the gig at Nearfest back in, again, correct me if I'm wrong, 1999, um, which was very cool for him to step out of his way like that to, to push the band and say, you need to get these guys on the bill. I mean, we were playing that night. Yeah. I believe we were opening up for uh, Spock Beard uh, was, the, was the headliner for that night. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. And again, something that he really didn't have to do, really didn't have to go out of his way, but he really appreciated what we were doing and really liked what we were doing live. Um, so he did take that upon himself to do. And luckily he did remember us. Luckily he did like us. Uh, he liked our personalities mm -hmm. and he liked our songs. So, I mean, it just kind of, it just kind of went from there. Uh, almost meant to be almost, you know, cause we didn't really do that many shows early on. Uh, not to that magnitude. So it was lucky that we actually ran into him and uh, it worked out this way. Oh, cool. Now in uh, 2004, uh, your EP came out. Uh, after a little while, did you figure that was it for the band? No more. Uh, and, you know, and then all of a sudden you come back after quite a bit of uh, time. Well, that's true. Uh, Jim, you want to take yeah. that one? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, as the years go by, I mean, uh, uh, there's a little bit of everything. Life kind of like comes into play. Right. Uh, everybody gets older. People have relationships with uh, significant others that have families. And uh, the label, what we musically wanted to do initially, the label was not really a friend of. Uh, so uh, that's why it's such a pleasure to have a label behind us now that actually understands what the band wants and right. what the band wants to do. So back in the day, it was always a struggle of where we wanted to go. And we had to confirm to a certain style of music that we couldn't experiment. We're very much experimental players. So right. couple of that with the years going by, with families going on, with lives coming together. And then at some point we decided that we didn't want to, although we loved playing and writing together, we just didn't want to deal with it business aspect of it right. and then we just decided to just stop now with this new album uh you have eight tracks were you planning on eight or did you want more or less or whatever there there wasn't a plan of how many tracks and in, in in the prog tradition right if you if you look at the duration yes. of, of a couple of these songs i mean you know to say goodbye as a as a two-part suite Right you know, is is like probably seventeen minutes. So you're talking like right. a quarter of the album. Right, is right there <laughs> uh, together now, which is a you know another uh, what I think is one of the standouts and uh, and and a really uh, takes you on a real dynamic ride uh, throughout uh, how the song evolves is eleven minutes. So like you know it's it's you know for us and I think for for prog bands in general. It's it's quality over quantity as far right. as like how many songs are on there. I mean, this is right. over an hour of music, and there's such a density, uh, and there's uh, so many different colors to what the band is as far as our musical identity and what we touch on stylistically. Like Hal said, you know, all of our influences as individual musicians and then as a group come right. into play where. You know, there's uh, there there's a part in Riverflow that uh, where I play a bass part that is fully influenced by Sade because right. I'm a huge Sade fan, mm -hmm. and so like who would think that like something like that would come into a prog song, but yeah. it, it does and it can. So all of that I feel um, you know is is to be considered. Right now, th this full album is it. Um completely hands-on with the band or did you have any other influences uh say the cover you know everything uh jim do you want to talk yeah. about how the cover came about so the yeah the cover is uh something that uh normally in the past i, I used to do the uh the covers for the first two albums and i used to do all the visual uh, representation of the band and <laughs> all the recording and all the mastering and everything around it, right? It was, I was really hands-on to the material. And then this time around, I think 
because we're older and we're more mature, uh, I think the goal was to just for us to be musicians and worry about the music right. and then let uh, outsource some of the other stuff and uh, see what, com- what comes up with it. And then, you know, that was uh, one, you know, that uh, Bjorn put together. Uh, we mm-hmm. really, all we did was to send him a song and we sent him some lyrics and he came up with a whole idea on his own. And that's mm-hmm. something that we really loved. He was able to capture what the band is all about. And by looking at the old albums, by looking at the material. So mm-hmm. that's how the album came about, which is great. But we also did the same for like mixing. Like in the past, I've mixed all the albums, right? But uh, we thought that it's better to have kind of like a sixth member kind of. Right. Just have someone that has experience with this music, this type of music. Right. And I... And possibly understands what the band is all about and hand him the material and say, why don't you mix it and see what, what you think the band should sound like rather right. than us being always in it. Right. So that added another dimension there that I think worked out in our favor tremendously. I think. Oh yeah. I think and the guy, the guy that actually well. did that yeah. is, uh, you know, someone that I personally like to call the Bob Rock of Prague. Uh-huh. His name is Rich Mauser. Right. And uh, he's got a sterling reputation for working with bands like Spock's Beard, Transatlantic, Dream Theater. Uh, you know, he's he's he he's a musician himself. Right. And, you know, he was in a band that was very active at one time. And then he, his career moved more into mixing and mastering. And, you know, he's become the go to guy of the genre. And. Right. Josh took a chance and reached out to him to see if he'd be interested. And you know, Jimmy and Josh flew out to LA to sit in on, on the sessions. And I mean, the, what he did is absolutely in my view, comparable um, as far as, you know, being that, that a list quality, I'd right. put it up against anything that comes out today or that has come out you know, in the history of recorded music as far as being like, you know, this is ready to go on the radio and I put it up against anything sonically. Right, right. Huh? Yeah, he also played a big role in, in, in the sound of the songs themselves too. Because yeah. we have, especially, uh, you know, recording all the tracks and, and coming up with all the little parts and stuff, we have an idea and what we think the part should sound like. And then we tend to mix it that way. And he had some interested ideas of mixing things a certain way that made the song sound different from what I had in mind. And, and really, like, he added, like, a six... Oh, he was almost like a six-person, right? It's almost like uh, that, that extra member in the band that just takes the band to another dimension, which we didn't have in the past, which was really good, I think. Oh, how- yeah, it was a little weird at first doing that. I remember at first when we were talking about it, it was like, oh, no, we've never done this before. It's always it's always been the, the core four, so to speak, to, to take care of it. And obviously, Jimmy doing doing 99 percent of that, you know, and to bring somebody in. And it was it was um, a little nerve wracking, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we did it. Just alleviated so much right. off of Jimmy's shoulders, off of everyone's shoulders. And like Jimmy said, a different perspective of someone who who got it, who understood where we were coming from. Yeah. And uh yeah, it was. It was. A, he did a fantastic job. Between, and we had uh, done that in the past, by the way. We had done. Uh, we had gone to like, with, especially with the first album. We tried. I think we went in. A, uh, and, um, I forget the name of the studio. Josh will probably remember it. A big studio in New York City to have it mixed, and then we tried a couple other studios, once upstate, and it never really worked out. Right? They never mm-hmm. really got the vision of the band. So we abandoned it early on, and that was that was what was uh, we were going to do this time around anyway. And, right. uh, you know, I think I think at the end of the day, we were like ecstatic uh, and we'd like to consider like Rich Master, like part of the part of the family. So uh, how, in 2004, that was the, the last release until this one. Uh, yep. What were you doing during all that time? You want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, 2004, after after we decided to kind of uh, put the, the band to not rest, but just to give it a break. Um, I actually went on to do different projects, um, some studio work, some hired gun kind of thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. I actually went back and played with an old band of mine, an old thrash band from Long Island called Cold Steel, Uh which uh, released uh, uh, another EP um, 
called American Idol, um, America Idol, I should say. Um, I did that for a while. I believe it or not, I was in a King Diamond tribute band. Oh yeah, uh, called them for many uh, years. Right. And we actually we actually went on a mini tour with uh, two of the members of uh, King Diamond, King Diamond and Merciful Fate, which was uh, Hal Patino on bass and uh, Mike Weed from Merciful Fate on guitar. Did that um, and actually went on and pursued actually a, a a band with Doug, as you probably well know of Ted Poley, uh, right. and did that for a while. Um, so I've just been bouncing around, kind of doing something uh, musically, not necessarily obviously in the vein of prog, something different, which I still I always enjoyed playing. It wasn't I'm not a, 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 a kind of drummer where it's got to be prog or I'm not into it or I need to right. be flashy. All that it's not my thing. Um, I'm all about the music and and uh, having a band that sounds good and a song that sounds good and and mm -hmm. uh, a good group of guys, which is really 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 hard to find. Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, I've been, I've been doing that scene for for a while, cool. and then uh, again, this this was something that was always in the back of my mind. I would always throw it out there. You know, maybe we should get together, kind of like see where we're at. And then uh, eventually, what did happen was we we talked about it, and I said, you know what, it's going on the twentieth year. Wouldn't it be cool if we just kind of release a song or two for the fans as a as a thank you on our site, just right. for them? We go on there, we just recorded two demoed songs. Thanks for all the support throughout the years, and uh, here's a little gift from us to you. It's the least we can do, and but it but it definitely evolved into something else, and I'm and I'm so glad we did it. Hey Jimmy, what did you uh, do during that time? Well, for me, it was uh, not very musical. I mean, I've been playing guitar all my life and writing original music all my life, and then at that point, uh, but I've also been very interested in. Uh, in art and graphic design, which I've did since like the early 90s. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of product design and a little mm -hmm. lot of uh, website design early in the early 90s. And then eventually I decided to just put the guitar down and I did for quite a long time. Right. I basically put the guitars up in the walls, hang the gear, and then I just did uh, graphic design. I became an art director in a company and, and, and followed that route. We still created but in a different vein, right? So uh, coming back to the to music was really not till like 2015 for me. Like I literally did not pick up the guitar from 2005 <laughs> for 10 years. I just, uh, it was in a case on the wall and I didn't do anything with it. So anyway, I have to blame Hal for that because it was on his barbecue <laughs> one day. He said, why don't you bring your guitar? And I was like, oh boy, I, don't, I haven't even changed strings in like 10 years. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Yeah, it took it took a lot of convincing. I have to be honest. <laughs> wow, because like, I haven't played. I don't know. And I'm like, come on, bring that dust that thing off and bring it. Let's just jam. Yeah. Worked out. You couldn't write a better story for us, really. I mean, we've gone through so much together, and obviously the absence of these two decades, and <clears throat> still being friends, still being brothers to the core, and uh, you know, miss playing with these guys absolutely. So it was it was just a great feeling to say we're going to do this. And we're going to do it to a, a, a level where we're all comfortable with and uh, see what happens. And Doug, I don't have to ask about yeah. you. Why? you. Yeah, you you know a lot about, you know, I was, uh, I went through a period where, you know, I was, I, I was worked with Ted. I worked with Ray West in his band APW for a while. And, uh, and I actually, I did a one-off festival appearance uh with rob lamoth from the river dogs right it was really exciting for me because i'm such a fan of his and um you know i i could i could spend 10 minutes talking about like what i've done but it really right. doesn't matter because ice age is the one band that i'm the most proud of uh for, of everything that i've ever done right and just to be in a room with these guys and play music with them, like, has forced me to step up my game as as a player and as a writer and as a contributor. I remember uh, Josh and I the other day were talking about the song "Float Away," which is on the record. Right. And 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 the first time I laid down a bass track with this band was on that song, and I remember I was shaking. I was so nervous. Like, oh, my God, like, you know, I can't blow this because, like, this is almost like my recorded audition right. with the band. And so, you know, I practiced for, like, you know, 
probably 20 hours just to like get that one song perfect. And uh, so being part of this and like Hal said, the, the brotherhood that we have that's stood the test of time and the fact that we're still together and that we have this new album that we're so proud of and so excited about, like nothing mm -hmm. matters to me more than that. And there's nothing worth talking about that's more significant than the fact that this band, you know, is intact. And here we are, 2023, we have a new album. And the response to the album has been incredible. Like every single person from fans to members of the press, to people that have never heard of the band before, right. everyone has just been completely on board and excited. And like, wow, Ice Age is back. You sound better than ever. You sound like you haven't missed a beat since you know the beginning right wow um you have a show coming up in september will that be your first show back together well it's going to be the first major appearance like on the festival level but festival, we, yeah yeah we realized that we're going to have to do some warm-ups uh, <laughs> to, to lead up to that right but that's the first significant you know appearance where we're going to be playing in front of the Prague audience which is you know, I mean, that's the ideal setting for right. a band like Ice Age. Now, when is this album going to be released or is it out already? I know, you know, many of the tracks are, you know, I got them. So, like, you yeah. know, a lot of press yeah. people got it. But what's the official release? Uh, official release is Friday, March 10th, next Friday. So, uh, yeah, it's a long time coming. Been waiting for this for a long time. And I'm excited. I know we all are. We, Very excited we, for that day. We teased the first single, and I, I say that in air quotes because you know it's it's Ice Age, and you know the, the, there's no really aren't really many short songs, right? Uh, it's just the nature. But yeah, we teased the Needle Eye. Uh, it's a lyric video uh, that's available on our YouTube channel, uh, and it's kind of like a combination lyric video, but it's got conceptual elements and band performance footage. And then we did an official audio release of Together Now, um, which is uh, also out there uh, and on our YouTube channel. And if anyone that wants to find that, it's youtube.com slash at Ice Age is a band. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got more video content coming, another music video in the works. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to share some more behind the scenes stuff and and uh, you know, it's we we realize that in in the age of social media and the internet, that that's a, a great way to keep people um, right. connected to us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, where, where can people pick up the album? So there's there's an official Bandcamp page that the label runs, uh, and if you you know again, this is all kind of linked up through our Facebook, through our right. website. Uh, if you go to ice-age.com, that links out to all, all of our major hubs. And so obviously, uh, if anyone wants to go to Bandcamp and go to the Sensory Records site, they can order the CD. They can also buy it uh, digitally. And we even have it, you know, in, in really uh, high-res high uh, audio there. But also any of your, your Amazons, any of your major uh, music online retailers it's going to be available there and also if you're more on the streaming side of things like your spotify's your title uh pandora amazon music all of those uh it's going to be available there as well so i mean we're leaving no stone unturned anywhere that you get your music you're going to be able to get the new album waves of loss and power well, I thank you guys uh, for the chat today, and uh, it was great talking to you and uh, a yeah, lot of thank info. You, Brian. Um, thank you, man. Thank you so much. No problem. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there one at a time? James? <laughs> uh, just that uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Uh, I love every one of our fans out there. Uh, there's just so many um, kind words about my playing and my and the music that I write that really touch my heart on a daily basis. And uh, that's the only reason I do this for uh, for the fans and, 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 and to make some connection and some good connection with the people out there that loves us. And thank you, everybody. That's all I have to say. Next. 
Doug. Well, first of all, Brian, I want to thank you because uh, you were one of the first people that reached out to us back in May of last year when we made the announcement. Right. And, uh, you know, and you've yeah, just, thank been you. such, yeah, you've just been such a, a great advocate um, for music over the years. And, you know, you've also got a great history as a photographer. I love it when you post yeah. photos you know, from, you know, through through the years that you've done of concert photography. And, uh, you know, it's just like the, the fact that you're still out there, um, you know, promoting music and, you know, sharing your love of music is is awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Um, um, I've, I've been probably the luckiest one out of all because I've been kind of hands-on with the site throughout since the band kind of decided to put one up and, and I've been getting uh, all the emails and all the messages firsthand and reading through them and, and just like Jimmy said some really heartfelt words about what the band and the music means to everybody and it's it, it's amazing how you know a, a guy like me or you know us as a band who, who I consider to be extremely humble down-to-earth guys have touched so many people musically around right. the world and inspired so many different people. And, it, and again, just to do this, it's, it's totally something that we wanted to do for them, for the right. fans, for the people that have always believed in us and kept us going. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good luck. Uh, good luck with the album. Thanks, man. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks again, thank Brian. You. No problem. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye now. All right. Later.